How did you do the rain? Hmm. I think I have a better way of doing this. So this thing is amazing. We wanted to kind of light just this table without having spill on the background. So this came in handy. Ah, <sighs> <sighs> okay. Let me check this thing. Can you hear me okay? All right, so we're back at it again. It's been a while, right? Uh, should we just get into this? Um, so, okay, I wanted to do this because I thought it might be kind of a cool and different way to do a behind the scenes look at things. People ask me questions from time to time, and instead of just replying with the same boring stock message, I thought it'd be useful and kind of fun to address those questions in a more immersive way, uh, if that makes sense. My last video generated more questions than usual, and I love answering questions. I ask questions all the time. I mean, how else are you supposed to learn? Um, anyway, I know how thankful I am when someone takes the time to respond back to me. I want to make sure that I'm passing that same courtesy along to others, and that's something that's really important to me. So if this ends up not sucking, and that's very much still up in the air at this point, uh, maybe it will become a reoccurring segment when and if the interest level warrants it. Don't know for sure, only time will tell. So with that being said, let's start off with something that I got asked about a couple times last video. Do you do any sort of pre-planning or storyboarding? So the answer is yes, I absolutely do. When I first started making videos, there was none of that going on and that's totally okay. Um, you certainly don't have to. But as I started diving deeper into things, I found it was getting more and more difficult to stay organized and much more importantly, to efficiently use the amount of time I had available to spend on creating videos. I kind of started just scratching frames onto notebook paper, which then turned into printing off storyboard templates I found online to at least sort out um, some sort of intro progression, and in some cases clearly lay out the rest of the video. I feel like it helps me to better visualize the edit, because for me specifically, sometimes it's not until I get it on paper that I realize that A, it's not going to work, or B, it's way above my skill level. I think overall, it mainly helps me better utilize my time. Does it always work as planned? Um, definitely not. It's funny actually, now that we're talking about it. In the last video, the whole storm intro was supposed to be way different. It was originally supposed to be cross-cut with this other sequence where a dark figure is lurking outside my house in the rain. Um, he was supposed to just be kind of like peering in my windows and wandering around the perimeter of my house, just being kind of a creep. Um, but it was supposed to end with you guys finding out that it was just the FedEx guy who had gotten disoriented by the storm while trying to locate my address in order to deliver me the Nanlite. But once I got it on paper and started thinking about things like how am I going to shoot a wide shot that calls for rain if it isn't actually raining, um, or the fact that it would take three people to pull off some of the shots and there were only two of us available. Couple that with the amount of time that it would be to if like do something like this. It was just really easy to see that I had to go a different route. And it might seem like a no brainer to most people, but for me, someone who was relatively inexperienced at all this, those are the sort of learning moments that I need to continue to help me improve. So moral of the story, yes, I definitely storyboard. And yes, I feel like it's really, really helpful. So this was another funny story. At least I thought it was kind of humorous. Uh, was it raining? Yes and no. So typically October in Minnesota isn't prime thunderstorm season, and true to form, it hadn't rained around here for weeks leading up to the day I was going to shoot. So I was okay with having to fake it. I mean, the only shot where it was really even necessary was the opening shot of the door where I kind of just wanted to set the mood a little bit. Um, so I went outside, I grabbed a hose, a garden sprayer, a ladder, and the Pavo tube, which had just been dropped off by the FedEx guy like an hour before. <sighs> 
Let me tell you something. It is not easy to make realistic rain with your garden hose. You kind of have to get the right angle, as well as dial in the spread and flow, or it looks completely ridiculous. Maybe this looks like rain. I feel like it goes like me spraying my door with a hole. I mean, it still didn't look great, but in the end, after a couple of tries, I got something I felt was passable. Uh, so once I got back inside, I was able to get by using four Aperture MCs in lighting mode, which I love, by the way. Those guys, along with the Aperture Citus Link app, I was able to trigger the lightning effect using an iPad, giving me somewhat of a convincing storm effect. Hey man, you gotta try and do the best you can with the tools you have at your disposal. Oh yeah, so the reason all of this ended up being super funny was, okay, so I finished shooting, put everything away, and went to bed. The very next night, bam, out of nowhere, one of the bigger thunderstorms our area has seen in terms of the amount of thunder, lightning, and heavy rain sprung up and ended up lasting for hours, which I ended up taking full advantage of. Which leads us into the next topic, I believe, which is... So I've talked about this extensively in a previous video, so I'll try to keep it somewhat short. I get sound from a few different places, SoundSnap, Epidemic, as well as from an ever-growing library consisting of stuff I've recorded on my own. For this particular instance, I started by grabbing ambient rain and storm clips from those sites. Um, but as soon as it started getting really out of hand weather-wise that next night, I scrapped it all and I grabbed some gear. I had a pistol grip mic, a recorder, and a pair of headphones. I went all over the place getting sound. It was a serious sonic gold mine. I got stuff inside, I stood outside, which was, looking back, probably not the smartest idea, um, and I got a ton of variation from opening and closing windows. It was a lot of fun, and the best part being that I now have all of these awesome thunderclaps and ambient rain showers to pretty much use forever. I'll always try and get stuff on my own, um, when and if I can. It's always so much more satisfying and the process is always educational in some way. Meaning you can figure out a way to do it better than the last time you tried, if that makes sense. I don't know, sound is just one of those things that I love spending time on. It adds so much and it's something that can easily be done in the right conditions by yourself. So, yeah. What did you use for lighting? Um, not much, to be honest. I already talked about placing the MCs all over the place. Um, for me, the hardest part was the wide shot. You obviously can't have stands or modifiers in the shot, so it drastically complicates things, especially in such a tight space as that was. Um, but I started by opening my lens up all the way, which was f1.4, to see if I could get enough light from the computer screen to light my face. If that wasn't going to work, I was going to have to move the slider and camera set up to a slightly different angle so I could hide a small light on the keyboard. But it ended up being plenty bright by itself, so that was pretty much all I used for a key light. I used a dimmer and the lamp in the corner to try and create some color contrast. And then I set a Pavo tube to around 3200K on axis above the camera and shot it through a 30 by 36 diffusion panel. It softened it up a ton and was supposed to kind of simulate a very subtle warm fill that could be spilling in from the lamps in the adjacent room. I had an LED panel gelled in my porch that I used as a rim or a backlight, and one more that I put outside, which I honestly felt super bad about. <sighs> okay, I just gotta talk about this really quick. So I shot this stuff super late. I know the clock in the video said it was like 8.45 p.m., and that's because that felt like a passable time when deliveries could still be made. But it was actually like 12.45 a.m. on a Monday morning. So I felt really bad for my neighbors. I had this LED panel on full blast outside my window. It's gel blue and it's bouncing off my house and totally spilling this bluish mess into all the windows on that side of their house. Now, these are the same neighbors I had to warn the day before I made the Aperture MC video. That's the one with all the police lights going off in the middle of the night. Um, but I texted them that if they noticed some police lights, it wasn't the SWAT team, it was just me trying to do an intro for a video. 
Um, or better yet, the time the cops actually came to my house. It was like 6 p.m. on a December night last year, and it was already dark out, and they started banging on the door saying that neighbors had reported strange flashes coming from inside. Um, it was just me messing around with the speed light, taking pictures with my cats. <laughs> the neighbors thought they were muzzle flashes from some serial killer's gun or something. I actually showed the police what I was doing to convince them that nothing sinister was happening. It was so ridiculous. So yeah, I put these people through a lot and I feel really bad for it. But they're such good neighbors, they're so supportive, and I really like them. Sorry, I'm rambling. Anyways, yes. That was pretty much all I had for lighting. <laughs> do you do this all by yourself? <laughs> the million dollar question. I get this one a lot, and there's not a real clear cut answer I can give you on it. If it was up to me, I would never do any of this alone. It's so much harder to do by yourself and it ends up being a lot less fun. Making videos, to me, is of course about getting the opportunity to be creative, but it's also about community. It's about getting together with friends and family, bouncing ideas back and forth, it's trying to make each other laugh, all while coming together to try and reach some sort of mildly fulfilling goal. The factor of the matter is this, the only time I do this stuff alone is when I can't find anyone that wants to hang or help me out. <laughs> that. Okay, so that ends up being the case a lot of the time, but I get it. People have their own things going on. And when that's how it shakes out, sometimes a change of plan is in order, or an idea gets shelved for a little bit. To be honest, I don't always understand the motivation behind a question like that, though. Do you do this all by yourself? To me, it's not some sort of badge of honor or feather in my cap to be able to say, hey, look what I did all by myself. It's not about that. It's never been about that. I make these videos to try and prove to myself that I can. They're not epic or technically sound, but that doesn't mean that one day they can't be. I'm obsessed with learning and improving. Posting online gives me a valuable conduit for feedback so people who actually know what they're doing can chime in and let me know how I can improve. In a sense, every user out on this platform I connect with helps me create. Everyone that takes the time to interact with this channel offering constructive criticism, encouragement, things like that fuel my motivation as much as anything else does. So, do I do this all by myself? Absolutely not. <laughs>